Oh, look out! The following program contains coarse language and mature subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. From Winnipeg, Manitoba, the CBC Winnipeg Comedy Festival presents Open House, starring Scott Falkenbridge, Patrick McKenna, Tammy Pescatelli, Kathy Jones, Don Birdstick, John Wing, and your host, Tim Nutt. And now, here's a guy who thinks a man's home is a hassle. Please welcome resident funny man, Tim Nutt. All right, excellent. Well, welcome to the Open House Show. Yeah. yeah. That's what we're doing. This is a show about homes and home ownership. So here's the premise. Uh, what we're going to do is this is an uh, open house. This is, we're going to pretend this is my house. <laughs> look, look what I've done with the place. I... It looks nice, but like, you know, my house looks nice when people are over, too. Because my wife likes people to think we live in a museum. You know, it's a, oh, God, we can't let people know that we live like this. <laughs> They've met our kids. <laughs> They're not mysterious. They're six and two and a half. It's like two hurricanes from the knees down. <laughs> there you go. She's so committed to this whole concept of we got to make sure people don't know we live like this that, you know, I'm thinking about tricking her into cleaning and just saying I'm coming over for a visit. <laughs> I don't know. Are you homeowners? Do you actually own your houses? Yeah? <laughs> Part of, the, part of the home improvement gang going down to the Rona, the Home Depot or the home whatever. Yeah, I could care less, really, about that sort of stuff. I just, I just mow the lawn, deal with it, pick up the dog crap, that sort of stuff. That's it. I don't care anymore. I live between the two opposites of this, though. I got this guy, Mr. Manicure. I don't think he's retired. And by the way, if you're on retirement age, do something else besides yard work. Get a hobby and leave me the hell alone. You're making me look bad. <laughs> and then this guy over here, on this side of me, he, he's abandoned it altogether. It's a vacant lot mentality. He doesn't mow, he doesn't weed, nothing. And I think he's a genius. <laughs> it's awesome. He just put up a big sign right in the middle that said, protected area. <laughs> Unicorn sanctuary. <laughs> Uh, your first guess is, uh, let's just say, what can we say? Uh, houses are like pies. <laughs> Come on, they need filling, huh? <laughs> All right. Here to give us a slice of what his is full of, please welcome the very funny Scott Falconbridge. So uh, let me tell you what's in my home. Uh, I, have a, uh, I have a beautiful five-year-old boy at home. He's full of life, full of energy. I say that because he's for sale. <laughs> if you act now, I'll throw in the grandparents. <laughs> I'm serious. I hate those people. <laughs> Everybody thinks that Nana's cute when Nana gives the five-year-old chocolate. That does not make Nana cute. That makes Nana a dealer. Of course, uh, we, sh we shop at Ikea. Uh, I, I, I personally think that Ikea is proof that humanity is stupid. <laughs> because they are a successful business. They, are, they have a successful business model. And this is it. You buy it, you build it. <laughs> and you know when you get in the store, that they're smarter than you, because the first thing you do is you give them your children. <laughs> and the whole store is designed to test your intelligence. That's why it's built like a giant rat maze. <laughs> and we just run through looking for all the cheese we can buy. <laughs> Never has cheap crap had such sexy names. <laughs> Would you like the Helga Stufa? You spend hours in the store walking around. You spend so much time in the store, they have a cafeteria in the middle for when you get hungry with meatballs that last longer than the furniture. <laughs> in 
and finally you get through to the end and there's a customer service representative. And how do they give you service? By telling you where you can go get it off the shelf. Because <laughs> you bought it, you go get it. <laughs> and then if you're like me, you pay for your stuff, you put it in the car, you go home, you come back, you pick up your kids. <laughs> and then you get to go home and build it. Build the furniture with things you've never seen before. Ninja stars and scrabble pegs. <laughs> you spend hours begging God for a hammer and a nail. <laughs> and you know they're calling you stupid because the directions have no words. <laughs> because they don't think you can read. <laughs> There's a picture of two people building furniture in the directions. That's their way of telling you. It takes two people. <laughs> so you know it's not going to be just a test of your intelligence. It's going to be a test of your marriage. <laughs> and you will say things to e each other that you, you would never say to another human being. <laughs> no, you just hold it. I'm going to... No, hold it while I... No, don't, don't twist it yet. I got to put the paint... No, put... No, the ninja star goes in after... No, wait. Oh, go to your mother's. The place I, I hate the most are the giant warehouse stores, the, the Ronas, the Home Depots. Do work at these places, just so you know. When we're walking down the giant aisle and we see you, <laughs> and we look at you, and you look at us, and then you turn around and run away. <laughs> Just so you know, we can still see you. <laughs> you haven't disappeared magically from our field of vision. <laughs> These places are so big, you have to ask for directions. Again, if we ask you for directions, we're asking you if you know where something is. We're not asking you if you don't know where it is. <laughs> Could you take a guess? <laughs> There's always one guy who will help you out, but he's no help whatsoever. Oh, uh, <laughs> me, I don't know. I don't normally work in this section. <laughs> There's one guy who know. You come back next Thursday. <laughs> I don't like, I don't like uh, the Home Depot once because they said they had a shed kit. A kit for sheds. So I go down to get the shed kit. And they hand me a list. It's just a list. I'm looking for the rest. I said, where's the rest of it? This is the kit. I want to I wanna build the shed. I don't want to build the kit. No, no, that's, that's, that's it. That's, that's the kit. So I look at the, all right, fine. First item. Where, where do I find this? Oh, we don't carry that. <laughs> I had to go to Rona to get my Home Depot kit. <laughs> I, I don't like the Home Depot commercials because everyone is smiling in the Home Depot commercials. Nobody is smiling when they go to Home Depot. <laughs> because if you're at Home Depot, it's because your home is broken. And you can't afford to hire somebody professional <laughs> I think these places are there because there's going to be an Armageddon. My advice, if there's an Armageddon, go to, go to Walmart. Because <laughs> they have everything. If not, Go to Canadian Tire, because not only do they have everything, but they have their own currency, and we can rebuild society. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Next up, Patrick McKenna's realtor gets the golden screw when Open House continues on the CBC Winnipeg Comedy Festival.
ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the Golden Screw Realtor of the Year is Ross Bungalow. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for voting for me. Ross Bungalow, once again, is Salesman of the Year. You know, <laughs> when I look out and I see the sea of faces of talented, talented salespeople as well, you know, I, I have to say this, people, from the bottom of my heart. Man, you picked the right guy. I'm great. <laughs> I'm so much better than you people. People say to me, Ross, <laughs> and I say, what? And they say, Ross, <laughs> what is the secret to your outstanding success? And I say, well, I get my people to focus on what's really important, the most important thing in the world. That's right, me. You see my picture, it's all over the city. It's on billboards and buses and transit benches, you know. More people sat on my face than Tiger Woods at a skank expo. That's true. <laughs> That's just true. I know some of you are looking at me thinking, well, okay, what kind of what kind of knob and tube wiring is this guy? Well, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what kind of guy this guy is. This guy's a people guy, my people. I'm a people person. It's all with me, it's all about the people. I don't care if it's a, you know, a confused widow who's being forced out of her home by a greedy family, or maybe it's a first time buyer way over bidding on a home that's right under a hydro corridor. I don't care, I love them. They're people and I love people. <laughs> and people are savvy these days. These boomers, you know, it's all about pride of ownership with them. I'll tell you, I just sold a house in the North End simply because it used to belong to a scientist. Okay, it was a meth lab, but you know what I mean, right? <laughs> it's, you go for it. You get what you get. Let me tell, oh, come on. Real estate is like breast augmentation. <laughs> Costs a lot up front, but it's worth it. <laughs> and if you get the right people doing it, you don't need construction for another 10 or 15 years. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, it's, for me, it's really not work. I just, I kind of, I just kind of like doing it. I love it. I love it. For me, it's about the moment of the sale. You know, you just the smell of a person when they're about to buy. You know, <laughs> that, you know, that like, gamey stink of want. <laughs> you no, know, it just fills my senses and intoxicates me. You know. <laughs> It's a little primordial, I'll be honest with you, you know, and I get this warm tingling down below. <laughs> and I grow a little tail. It's kind of a bump, really. <laughs> I call it my Bielsa bump. <laughs> but I feel it wanting to burst out and wrap around the client and me and the house and just hold on to us in that moment, you know, and I say, Bill, Cheryl, you take your time. Don't send that paper just yet. Just hold it. Just slow. Just slow. Because <laughs> we are going to do this. And when we are, I'm going to just want your musk, your bile's musk. <laughs> and we're going to do this just you, me, and my tail. I also want to thank my wife of 10 years, Courtney. <laughs> uh, 
she was a real fixer-upper when I found her, I'll be honest, you know. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's okay. We had an extreme makeover, you know, hack back the trees and bushes. She's good to show now. <laughs> is just a building. It's the people in it that make it a home. A crazy, dysfunctional, stressed out home. <laughs> Here to talk about her own unique madhouse, Tammy Pescatelli. <laughs> I gotta tell you, growing up in my house, it was always crazy, because my brothers and I were always bad. I, I didn't even realize how bad we were until I heard someone say to my parents when I was an adult, did you always know she was gonna be a comedian? And my mother said, no. And they said, well, what did you want her to be? And my father said, quiet. <laughs> <laughs> my brothers and I, if a balloon came into that house, we would keep it for a week, <laughs> right? Because you play that little game called Keep It Up. Whoever let it hit the ground, you beat the crap out of, don't you remember? <laughs> We've been playing since Sunday. <laughs> we would make up games. We used to play Guess Who's Adopted. That was fun. That was fun. That was fun. Wasn't so much fun for my little brother, but for the rest of us, hilarity. <laughs> the starving children in Africa commercial will come on. We go, look, there goes your brother. There goes your brother. Look. We can only take one. You're lucky. Look it. Look it. Now I live in Los Angeles and everybody says to me, how do you deal with all the crazy people there? Pfft. My family prepped me for it. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you that my family's insane, but no one in my family has ever been to therapy unless it was court ordered, okay? <laughs> in Los Angeles, it's, it, they are crazy though. Like I was supposed to be on this show, it was very popular. Uh, the second season was not so popular, called Dancing with the Stars. You know this show, right? I told everybody, I'm like, you gotta watch a show, I'm gonna be on the show. I called home, I'm gonna be on the show, watch a show. I got a call just before I left my house. They said, Tammy, we're sorry, we're going in a different direction. I said, I have GPS, where are you going? I will follow you. <laughs> I will stalk you like Christopher Columbus with MapQuest. Where are you going? <laughs> Do you know who they chose to be on Dancing with the Stars over me that second season? Heather Mills McCartney. Oh, you know who she is, right? She used to be married to a Beatle. She's an amputee. You don't know a bad day at work till you've been replaced on a dancing show by a one-legged broad, okay? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh. When I was single, I used to always worry that I was going to be alone. I'm alone, I'm alone. Now I'm married, I'm never alone. I am never, and I almost didn't get married, I'll be honest with you, because they say you don't really know someone until you live with them. And that's true, but it's not about the person, it's about the stuff that they bring to your house. <laughs> stuff that a grown-up will bring to your house that is so disgusting, when you look at it, you lose all respect for that person. <laughs> I opened up this one box my husband brought to the house the week before we got married, and I tell you what was in there, I almost called everything off. It was so, and before you think porn, no, I grew up with all boys and I've never prayed for porn more in my life when I saw what was in there. Do you know what he had that was so disgusting? Hammer pants. Four pair of MC Hammer, Shaq, Kazam, Zubaz, Genie, Joey, Buttafuoco workout pants. So, what the hell are these? So don't throw those away. You never know. If what, we get a flux capacitor to go back to the 90s, Arsenio? It's just not what I thought. I mean, I love my husband, I'm happily married, but I thought marriage was this theory, two heads are better than one, right? Wonder twin powers, activate. <laughs> not really. Marriage is where one person's useless information seeps into your head and makes you dumber than you've ever been before. <laughs> it's really, it's... <laughs> it's like house osmosis, I don't know what it is. It's... Like, here's a perfect example, three weeks ago I'm asleep. Dead asleep, I wake up, I'm choking him. <coughs> he wakes up, he looks at me, goes, what's wrong? I go, <clears throat> I'm choking. He said, uh, maybe you ate a spider. <laughs> what? He said, I was watching the Discovery Channel. 
And the average person eats about eight spiders a year in their sleep. <laughs> You're an idiot, okay? Because now I can't sleep. Because I don't know if I'm on spider one or spider eight. I gotta sleep with a nicotine patch over my mouth. I'm punching him in the crotch, because if I gotta be awake, he's gotta be awake. <laughs> I'm laying there thinking, what kind of sick sadist scientist is doing the research, watching seven spiders crawl into someone's mouth and not flicking out the eight? <laughs> and I'm happy. <laughs> it's because we're honest in our house. Honesty is not a problem. I told him all this stuff. I said, if you want to cheat on me, go ahead. I'll just stab your mother in the eye with a fork. That's it. <laughs> Her, but that's the theory of relativity. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction where one of your relatives gets hurt, okay? <laughs> and I'm not gonna tell you that my mother-in-law is difficult, but the Pope would stab her with his hat, okay? Uh... <laughs> now I'm a mother and that's, I can't please anybody. I tell you, and when I told everybody in Los Angeles I was pregnant, my agent goes, well, apparently your career's over because I've never seen a pregnant woman on stage. So, well, apparently you've never been to a really bad strip club because <laughs> it's just a two for one dance is all it is. It's... I didn't realize how much people get in your business every time, like, once you have a kid. Like, I was barely home with the baby two hours and I received a phone call from this Nazi breastfeeding organization, okay? <laughs> Because I bottle fed my baby. They said, we want to come over and breastfeed your baby. I said, my son is fine, but my husband could use some attention. <laughs> it's those hammer pants, you know, he's too legit to quit. <laughs> some people write me nasty letters because I travel, you know, they're like, oh, I think it's terrible that you travel around the world and leave your baby at home. If any of you are thinking that, just know this, tonight, I actually brought my son with me. I did not leave him at home. He's with me tonight. Um, he's in the car in the parking lot. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good night. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, Kathy Jones proves old folks got jokes. It's open house on the CBC Winnipeg Comedy Festival. Old age homes, the place you can find yourself in when you've sold your home and you're about to buy the farm. Fresh from her 4 p.m. dinner, please welcome Mrs. Enid. Look at you. You look good. You look very, very good. How are you? Everyone good? Oh, my God. Oh my, the stress of it all, what? The speed, the annoyance. We live our lives like we got to get somewhere, like we got to get through it, because we can't do it fast enough, because we're going somewhere. Well, my darling, I just moved into St. Jude Senior's home two months ago, and I'm here to tell you on good authority, we're not going anywhere. <laughs> I was nervous going into St. Jude's because my sister Eulalia went in there two years ago and she never came out. But of course, she had come out two years before that. She didn't think it was necessary. <laughs> I tried to take a walk the other day out to the mall to go down to Chapters and get a book. And oh my God, the sour face on the nurse when my bracelet went off. Oh, they're, it, they're, it's worse than Rikers up there for the security. <laughs> Honest to God, they were all over me like the female cops of Maricopa County or something. <laughs> it's only a bit of weed for my glaucoma, I was hooting. <laughs> but they can't hear me over the alarm, see? And then the stupid questions, who are you? Who's president? Who's prime minister? Cripes, I'm me. Obama is president and the Grim Reaper is the prime minister. <laughs> I said to them, I'm not a wanderer. I know who I am. Sure you do, Mrs. McCarthy. I said, no, 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 these are her teeth, yes. <laughs> but apart from that, I'm Enid. Enid Brophy, under C for Compass Mentis. <laughs> Sad irony to be under house arrest for the crime of living like there was a tomorrow. She recognized me then. 
And she said, oh my God, Mrs. Enid, I'm sorry. I'll have Brendan come up and get that old bracelet off for you. Now, get it off for you is what she said, not get it on with you. <laughs> that is the only downside of the appearance of Brendan. Because, oh my God, he makes me weep. He thinks I'm nostalgic, but oh my God, Brendan. Brendan, the man nurse, if eyes could come. <laughs> is the only upside of the joint. He's gorgeous. Honest to God, I know he'd be scooped up on Bonanza to play one of the Cartwright brothers if he wasn't busy washing my back, you know. <laughs> Other than that, the fellas in there are not worth putting your teeth in for or taking them out for that. <laughs> They say men produce sperm well into their 80s. Keep it! <laughs> My niece comes in every week. Last time she was in, she made me make a list of what did I want when I lost my mind. Number one on my list, I want my mind back! <laughs> Hello. But it's no good to be all, you know, keen as mustard into St. Jude's because uh, everyone is either ducky or skipper and everyone gets spoken to in the same way as if you're five years old and you're holed up in a soundproof bubble. How are you today, Mrs. Cranberry? <laughs> What's that you got there, chocolate? Oh my, that's bad. What, do you want to get your foot cut off? <laughs> no, you don't. Then you're going around then like, insert name of person who's incrementally worse off than Mrs. Cranberry. <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> now. The food, don't even talk to me. There's all you can eat, arrowroot, which is weird because mostly everybody in there is unteething. <laughs> and Dixie cups coming out of your ears. What am I, six? What's funny is we don't want what you think we want. The crowd of us who unfortunately did the cryptic crossword and gave up salt and made it this far. For example, maybe we don't like plastic plants and polyester sheets and canned fruit and hang on to your hats. Not everybody loves the tune Puff the Magic Dragon. <laughs> Contrary to popular belief, loving Puff the Magic Dragon is not something that comes to you naturally just because your skin slacked up. <laughs> and I listen to the radio in the middle of the night and sometimes, except for the smell, I can almost feel like I'm back at my own place. I live in the moment and the past I remember vividly and beautifully. So maybe the cryptic crossword was worth it, I think. And if you believe like the Buddhist crowd, like my niece, that we're coming back, well, maybe I'm much closer to being very, very young than most of ye out there. <laughs> yes. I look forward to that. I look forward to it because the modern mothers are doing a very good job. And while I'm waiting for my triumphant departure and my celebrated return, I get my kicks the old fashioned way, dropping out my teeth suddenly to scare children. <laughs> Now that never gets old. Kathy Jones, everybody. Next, Don Bernstick is on the move and leaving nothing in reserve. It's the CBC Winnipeg Comedy Festival. I, c I couldn't let this topic go by. Home ownership, that sort of stuff. I want to talk about neighbors. Are you, are you good neighbors? Are you nice people to the people? Yeah? Are you, here's a question. Are you friends with them? People live on either side of your house. Hell no. Yeah. There you go. Exactly. Hell no. Why would you be friends with the people that live next door? Once the fences are up, yeah, go to hell, buddy. That's how that works. 
If you got a problem, you deal with it. But other than that, yeah, you don't want to call the cops on your friends. <laughs> you don't want to be 3.30 in the morning, oh, well, Dave's a good guy. I think I can take a bit more Metallica tonight. I'm a bad neighbor. I am totally a bad neighbor. I am. I'm not fitting in with the other people in the neighborhood. Imagine that. <laughs> they all have jobs and stuff, right? They think I'm a drug dealer, the ones that don't know. Because I, I work like three days a week and I fly away. I like disappear for times. I think they think I'm a drug mule or something. Sorry. They're just like, oh, you're going to Columbia, have it? No, I went to Saskatchewan. I had really good neighbors once. When I had an apartment, I had the best neighbors ever. Uh, I lived next door to a funeral home. <laughs> Quiet people. <laughs> it was and free sandwiches. <laughs> the only only nightmare about living next door a funeral home is if they ever bury a Scots like people from Scotland, because then the bagpipes would tune up in the alley. I think they play the bagpipes at Scottish funerals to make damn sure he's dead. <laughs> and another group of neighbors, they were fun. Uh, we were living in a, in a our, my wife and I, our first house was duplex, you know, one of them. Well, I, well semi-detached. <laughs> duplex, quit making up new words. It's annoying. But they, uh, we bought ours, and somebody bought the other half to use as a rental property. Oh, spin the wheel of losers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was horrible. The first group, they were a bunch of frat boys. They thought it was going to be like an off-campus party house. Yeah, until I kicked their door open and went, shh. And then the group that moved in after them, but they're nerds. I don't know a better word for that. Nerds, geeks, whatever. They're, it was awesome. They moved in, five guys, three bedroom house. I'm doing the math. <laughs> <laughs> they moved in, a bunch of like, just wandering in with computers and routers and Xboxes and inhalers. And not the slightest chance of talking a woman into coming over. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. It was all super cool. There you go. I'm, a, I'm also a bad neighbor. I do this. You ever do this? You ever forget Garbage Day is Tuesday? <laughs> you ever do that? I'm, I'm, I'm a night person, so I'll sneak out in the middle of the night like a ninja. Because <laughs> we're allowed uh, four bags of garbage every two weeks. And if you miss it, uh, then you're screwed, especially if you've got babies with diapers. I had to build a, a shed on the side of the house to keep... <laughs> I did. I built a shed. What's that? That's a diaper shed. Don't open that. <laughs> Don't open that. <laughs> but you find out. You find out who puts out three bags. You watch. Around 10.30, you watch. Oh, who's putting out? <laughs> you set your alarm, 4 o'clock in the morning. Oh, I'm going. You open the diaper box, the skunk is going, uh, finally! <laughs> finally! But it's dark and you can't tell. You wake up in the morning, there's three black ones and one green one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this next performer traded his house on the res for a house in town. I'm not here to judge which is better, but when you live in town, the pizza gets delivered a hell of a lot quicker. <laughs> Here's the hilarious Don Burnstick. Wow! Yeah, I, I, I'm from the res. <laughs> Uh, and, and I'm supposed to talk about houses on the res, but you know, like, you know, like I have 18 people, one house, 12 people, one car, <laughs> roads like this. <laughs> drive down Keniston, same thing, huh? <laughs> That's right. 
So, but it's different when you when you live in a house with a lot of people, because you got to be creative when you have like, mm hmm, hey. <laughs> you got to be an expert at quiet sex. It takes real talent to feed the baby and have num num same time, man. <laughs> yeah. So I grew up and then uh, I left the res. Oh yes, yes. I bought my first house. Wow. Well, I was married, and I missed marriage. I missed the celibacy. <laughs> and then I moved here. I moved to Winnipeg. Yes, I moved to Winnipeg, and it's home. I live, uh, I live in Wellington Crescent now. I bought a house there. Yes, eh? not bad, eh? Yeah. <laughs> well, when I first came here, I didn't know what Wellington Crescent was. I just, you know, okay, I'll, that house looks good. I'll take it. <laughs> and they're going, really? Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. You know? But to live there, I had to change my name to Don Bernstein. <laughs> hey, you got that one, eh? <laughs> The neighborhood kind of got tough when I moved there, though. The, 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 the guys started wearing their yarmulkes on the side, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we started a gang, you know. <laughs> I had to put a coffee filter in my head. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. It's weird living on a crescent, you know. <laughs> because when you're out in a res, it's kind of the forbidden zone for white people. They never go out there, you know. <laughs> you know, I, I was cutting my grass there. And all of a sudden, a neighbor came across the street and said, um, how much does your company cost to uh, cut grass here? <laughs> yeah, I know. And I said, I'll cut your grass. <laughs> <laughs> I'd scalp you, but somebody else beat me too, it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, one thing about one, one crescent, and I, I got in trouble a couple times because I went driving on Sunday there. No one's, you can't. That's no, no, eh? Because <laughs> they shut the street down for people who do this thing called exercise. <laughs> so I, I, I sit outside my house and I watch all these white folks run by him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Drinking my coffee. <laughs> well, there they go, another one. Look. You, you know, the only time you see a native running is the police are chasing them, you know? <laughs> So I'm sitting there, I'm like, okay, well, I might as well run with the white folks, I guess, you know, might as well fit in. So, you know, I go grab my, my running shoes and my, my jailhouse uniform, get all ready to exercise. <laughs> and I get out on the, on the crescent, you know, and I'm like, oh. And I know this, when you exercise, you got to get your heart level up, and you got to keep it up for, for a number of minutes, and then you bring it down. Okay, I had no pacer, nobody to run with, so I'll just, and over here, about 20 yards ahead of me, there was a, a non-native woman, a white woman, jogging by herself. So, you know, she's going at a good pace. You know, a white woman jogging. <laughs> and she's going at a good pace. So, okay, well, I'll just keep this distance. I'll keep up to her for 15 minutes, and that's a good workout. <laughs> and all of a sudden, this woman turns around. She goes... I'm like, holy shit, somebody's chasing us. <laughs> she turns around, ah! <laughs> so anyway, my name's Don Burstick. Peace out, you guys. Thanks. Coming up, John Wayne proves home is where the hearty heart heart is. It's open house on the CBC Winnipeg Comedy Festival. This performer was recently honored in a ceremony in his hometown. His mom finally cleaned out his room. <laughs> Here to tell us why you can never go home is the very funny John Wing. Thank you. You can't go home again, my friends. My name is John Wing. I come from Sarnia, Ontario, the red deer of the east. <laughs> I'm not bragging. Sarnia is not my home, it's my hometown. 
you can go back to your hometown. But I wouldn't recommend it. I went back for my high school reunion, which was a mistake. Everything had changed in our town, you know? The grade school I used to go to was an office building. My high school is a Walmart. <laughs> store I worked in the summers is now the Bank of Montreal. And I knew at the reunion there'd be a girl I dated who is now a man. <laughs> Ran into my best friend in high school, Jim. Jim hasn't changed. You may know a guy like Jim. Uh, Jim's kind of guy, whatever you're talking about, he's talking about sex. <laughs> you know guys like that? Doesn't matter what you say. You know, what, what'd you do today? I took the car in, had to get the, the tires rotated. like to rotate her tires. Boy, I would spin her like a top. There'd be skid marks everywhere. Jim? Oh, sorry, man. <laughs> you know, in a restaurant, all the toss salad, like to toss her salad. Boy, I would invade her cabbage patch. There'd be mayonnaise everywhere. Jim, for God's sake, I'm eating here. You can't go home because home is not a place. It's a time. A time when your heart was broken every month, but your legs never hurt like they do now. <laughs> a time when you could fish in Lake Huron and eat what you caught without worrying about mercury poisoning. You could smoke indoors and watch 13 channels on your TV, nine of which were CBC. The Prime Minister came to your town and you shook his hand and he smiled and didn't try to choke you. Uh, home is the community pool. It was always overflowing because so many people pissed in it. The good memories come flooding back, don't they? Home is making love in a field during an electrical storm and you're struck by lightning and she dies, but thank God you're wearing a rubber. <laughs> Am I the only guy that happened to? <laughs> Home is street hockey and tackle football and a variety store with dirty magazines in the back. And an old creepy guy who was always there looking at the magazines. You wanted to avoid him. I don't have to worry about him anymore. I am him. <laughs> Home is where you know every street and every street knows you. You know how fast you have to go down Main to catch all the lights? All four of them. <laughs> Home is your favorite place. The bedroom where you first touched yourself and thought, hey. <laughs> I'm probably gonna have to do this again tomorrow. <laughs> and it's free. <laughs> My bedroom was on the third floor of our house and it was very private. In high school, I used to bring girls up there for hours. My mother once asked me, what do you do up there with those girls? And I said, I play them my George Carlin records. And she said, are you gay? <laughs> home is where you're young and happy. This is my home, actually. This stage. And you, you're my family. I, I need some money and a car. I'm John Wayne. All right, well, uh, that's our show. Thanks a lot. Uh, good night, everybody. Thanks for dropping by. Thanks for coming to our home show. Just take care of it. Wednesday at 8 on CBC. Line on CBC. Oh, yeah. CBC News The National starts now.